Hello everyone and welcome back. So in this video we'll create this scene from scratch. We'll touch on topics such as cops extensively, uh, some VEX concepts and also how to set up the scene in Solaris and do the final render. So yeah, hopefully you will find this useful and let's get started. So in order, in order to set up the scene, we will use a bit of VEX combining SOPs and uh, COPs. Uh, we could probably do something similar with the tile sampler in the COP network, but I want a very particular look where some rocks are more rotated than others, and it will be a good chance to combine both workflows of the SOPs and COPs. So yeah, let's get started by dropping a geometry container. Oops, geo container. Oh, I already have a geo container in here. Okay, let's create a grid. And this will be on the ZX plane, that's fine. We'll set a size of one by one. And in this case, I'm gonna use 21 rows and 21 columns. And now we will extract the centroids from this. So we can just create an attribute triangle or do the extract centroid is the same, but I'm gonna set this to primitives, add point, to the current input and position and remove frame current input at frame num. This will create points on the centroid. Remove prim zero prim num. Remove prim zero at prim num. So why is this not working? Int int Oh, we need, we need to add a one in here, so remove the, the points also. Uh, now that we have the points, <clears throat> I want to remove some of the middle points and place a single one in there, so we can have the Aldini logo or any logo you want to place in there. So I'm going to create another wrangle. So this will be a lot of wrangles, but hopefully you will learn something from it. So we're going to create a mask from the center. So float center equals length V at P. So the length of the position. And we can actually visualize that by assigning to an attribute. And you can see that we have a mask from the center. It's not normalized, but that's okay. Now we can leave this one. Now we will delete some points in the center. So if center smaller than some threshold uh, we will remove the point remove point zero incoming inputs and pt none so let's see how that works and you can see it's deleting from the center in a circular pattern uh, in this case i used a value of 173 so something like this and now what's next? Uh, now we will add the point to the center. So create another wrangle. And we, in this case, we just want to add one point. So let's set it to detail. Let's create a vector bounding box center. It will be get bounding box center. Zero inputs. And let's create a, a detail attribute in this case. And let's set the point. Zero PBC. Let's see if that works for us. It does. Let's disable the mask. And we have that point in the center. So <clears throat> now we need to tell the, the COP network which, which uh, layer to use in the points. So in this, in this middle point, I, I want to use uh, the layer one or the stamp one. And in the, all the other ones, I want to use the stamp zero. So for that, we will yet create another angle. And let's set this to points. And we need to set the stamp attribute so the COP network recognizes it. And I'm going to do a simple if statement with the select function. And I'm going to say at ptnamp is equal to detail, detail, zero, center point. So if the point number is the center point, so if we are targeting this one, we will set it the layer to one or the stem to one otherwise set it to zero let's see if that works for us so if we set this stamp and we set it to marker and we have zero and one in the middle so 
we need to do quite a bit of setup to make this work but hopefully in the end it will be worth it i'm gonna also use the same expression to set the p scale i have some values so in this case i'm gonna use five for the center one and one for for all the other ones let's see what next uh, now we will group some random points we could use a, a group node but just to keep it this this vex base based approach we will use some rango and i'm gonna group create a group named rand points and it's going to be random of the pitinum plus a seed and I'm gonna say that this is smaller than some threshold. So, uh, threshold, threshold. And let's see. And we can actually get this, copy this name, and I'll put it in here. So, let's make sure we select some points. In this case, I had a value of 0.272 and a seed of 7. So these random points that we have will have a different uh, amount of rotation. That's just the particular look I was after that I saw in my reference. You don't need to follow that, but in this case, we are doing it this way. So next, we need to take care of the, the rotations. And it's about we are we're about done with this offset up. So let's create just a random attribute attribute just float. And I'm going to call it mask rot, which will mask the rotation. We will multiply it with some rotation values. I'm going to set it to random. And I have some values in here, a value of point of weight and a default value, a seed of 14. And this will be more visible in a bit, but for now, let's just set up this and a default value that we will assign to all the other um, points. So we have that set up. Now let's do the most the mo most complicated part, which is the rotations. And we will be able to see right after this, the COP result. Let's create a seed. Int seed is equal to channel integer seed. Let's create the up attribute for cops. So in this case, we will need them along the Y. So set 0, 1, 0. And let's create the normal along the X in this case. 1, 0, 0. And now we need some random value. So I'm going to call it float. I'm going to call it amount. N, and it will be a rent of the pitinum and with the seed and we will rotate it randomly between minus pi and pi so so float amount pi will be equals to feet of one amount n so the previous uh, value and between minus pi and pi and now we can just multiply. So let's actually do the quaternion first. So vector for what will be equal to quaternion. And the amount, the angle we want to rotate is the amount by and along the axis up. And now we just need to rotate it. So rot will be equal to so u rotate, rotate the quaternion and to the end and now we just need to assign this to the normals so quite a bit of setup but now let's actually do a cop network and let's see let's do a sub import let's first of all create an all in here and name it out points let's copy control c sub import use external and paste now we will rasterize the setup and we want to move it to the cop space 
which will be in the position and bounding box scale to fit and in this case i think i used i think i used uh, z up yes so in this case the app which is the default space for the cop network now let's stamp the point and these will be the points and let's see if we change the radius which in this case i use a value of 0.042 and as you can see we have a lot of random rotations let's pin this view and now let's go again in here and let's multiply the rotation by the mask that we created so in this case we need to go in here and say amount by oops amount by times equals f at mask rot and this will rotate them but in this case we want to target the points in here so in this case i'm gonna set the group type the group to be not the random points we selected so you can see we rotate more those those values in the in the random points and yeah i guess this is it now let me check something we also need an attribute noise in here so attribute noise uh, attribute noise uh, 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 can be on cd but in this case we will use in the b and this will be too much so we want zero centered and 0 0.03 and an element scale of 0 0.11 oops and mm -hmm. what is going on in here so if we remove this let me see do we want it to be so what about noise am i doing this properly oh we don't want to recompute the normals that's why it was not working so let's actually spin this and let's make sure we don't recompute the normals in the post process i think yeah so there we have the random positions so we just scatter them around a little bit and in this case i played with the offset i'm gonna keep it the same way so as you can see some of the the tiles or some of the stones will have more rotation than others and this is just a particular look i found well you don't have to follow this but that's what we have for now let's keep going on the next part so now we also want to put the a logo in here in this case i'm going to use the Audino logo so let's go in here and add a new stamp so two and as you can see we have that that logo in there and i'm gonna load a file let me check in here I just downloaded the logo from the side effects website and I'm gonna paste in here. So this is the logo and we will RGB to RGBA to mono. So to convert this to a mono, let's make sure we set this to maximum to have the white value. And now we can connect this to the stamp one and we will have this now. Uh, I have a different result in this case. Let me see. Uh, I might need to play with uh, orientations in here. So let me make sure I have the correct seeds. I mean, you can play around with this setup. But in this case, I'm gonna make sure I have the same seed. So, same seed. And then we have a triple just float. And we can play with the seed in here. So, yeah, we need to set a different seed. So, you can play around. In this case, I'm gonna pick the number seven. Alright. So, now that we have everything save and let's see we have the id we have the uvs and we have the stamp so we have everything we need what we will create next so we have a fractal in here 
So we will just create a distort first. So this one, oops, distort. And we will distort this stamp. And we will create a, a fractal noise. And we will set it to UV and center to zero. Let's make sure we distort all the way, I believe. Yes. And then we can play with the amplitude. So let's just say one. 0, 016 and the element size of 0.08 so something like this maybe a little less so something along those lines so we just want a bit of distortion uh, and in this case, I changed the noise type to Perlin, so it has a bit more effect on it. Let's reset the viewport. So what else we will do? We will create another rattle noise. So let's copy this one. And in this case, we will set the center to 0.5. So we reset and set this to mono. And we will use Whirly Cellular F2 F1. And why is this? So let's have an amplitude of 0.7 and change the element size, something like this, and maybe reduce the roughness. So something along those lines. Now we will remap this. So remap, because we want to introduce some cracks. This is just a cheap way of doing it. And I'm gonna change the mean. And the max, something like this. And I'm gonna use a similar setup in here, a distort. Let's see how that looks. In this case, I use the bigger amplitude and a bigger element size, something like this. Now, we can take a minimum, it's just a, it's just a blend mode, and we will take these as foreground and distort as background. So let's see, and we introduce some cracks in here. Okay, now we will convert this, we will create a segments by connectivity so we can have some id as you can see and i believe i didn't play with anything and now create a let me see create a random mono and connect the id to the seeds and in this case we want to have the black backgrounds a seed of 21 the rest will be fine and now we will take another random mono and get the id from here and for this one we'll set the seed to 36 and play with this ramp i believe i set it to flat uh, how did i uh, constant let me see which one I used. So it's flat. Oh, I need one value in here. So we're just removing some of the some of the stones. So in this case about seven nine, maybe a bit more. Something like this. And now we will blend. So after this random mono, we will blend and we will blend this as a mask and get, uh, let me see, as a foreground we will get this one and 
and this one as a background. Let's see how that looks. So we're taking the random mono and the other one. And we're just darkening and lightening some of the tiles. So now we will extract some parts from it with a compare. And the compare, we will set this to A greater than B. Let's see and play with the threshold. So we'll just remove some of the parts in this case. I set it to 0.315. This will be fine. And this is our new texture. And let's keep going on the next part. Okay, now let's create the albedo texture or the diffuse texture. So for that, I'm going to load a file. It will be easier than just play around with random noises. And I'm going to use this texture from Polyaven. And then I'm going to UV sample. So this will be the texture. And I'm going to set it to RGB instead of RGBA. Because we will use this in the base color. And let's connect this to the UV. And if we look at the result, we will we sample the texture. Let's set this to 2K for now. And this already looks better. In the end, we might change the resolution. So now we will multiply this. Since here we have all the stones, we will multiply this with our current mask. So let's sample this. Uh, it doesn't matter which input it is, so we will multiply it with this. So let's maybe do this, and we will get this sort of result. And after that, we will add some random uh, color corrections. So from the seeds, we will create a random mono. So let's create a random mono. And connect this to our which one did I connect? So in this case to the first one. So let's connect this to maybe let's do it different. Let's connect it to this one. And I'm I want to make sure I do zero, zero negative IDs. And what else? Uh, we can keep it like this and now let's do an HSV adjust. This is this is just like a color correction node. Now if we increase the saturation, you can see everything will get the same saturation. But if we introduce this to the mask, some will have, some will not, uh, according to, to this mask, as you can see. Which I don't know which sort of values I use in here, but maybe a value of 1.4, a U shift of 5. Let's see, it's maybe, uh, and the rest I kept it the same way. Let's see, we introduce some saturation. And if we remove the mask, yeah, let's keep it like that. What else we will do? We will create the, the ground texture. So in this case, I'm gonna be lazy and use the exact same one. Just color corrected, so I'm gonna create an HSV adjust. And I'm in this case I'm gonna reduce the value. Something like this. And now blend it. So let's create a blend. And these will be the foreground, and as the background we will use this one, and as a mask, we will use this one. Our mask. So let's keep it like this. It's always hard to organize these networks. As you can see, we already have a pretty cool diffuse texture or albedo. Let's maybe do some final adjustments with an HSV adjust. So this is an overall color correction, or you can do it in Karma. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use a U. Uh, 
something. So a bit more, something like this. Increase just a bit the saturation and a bit of the value scale also. So something like this. This is just an overall color correction. Let me see if that looks similar. It does. And now let's just create a null and call this albedo. So that's our main texture done. So now let's create the displacement. So we can take this ID and create a random mono. Oops, connect this to the seed and make this zero negative. And yeah, we can take this one and I'm gonna set the seed of 30 and multiply this over our current mask. So this is our current displacement map. So if we multiply this. Uh, not this one, sorry. This one in here, after the compare. So we'll get this sort of result. <coughs> now we can add some elevation variation. So some some uh, tones will be on an angle. So for that, I'm going to take the UVs and do a UV transform. And in this case, I'm going to also take the seed, the ID as a seed, and do uh, some random rotations around 180. And I played with the seed also. So something like this, as you can see, some will, they will rotate around. And now we can take this and create a ramp. So let's create a ramp, mono, take the UVs to the position. And this will be fine. And now we can multiply this over our current results. So multiply and oops and take this. This will just create some elevation variation, but in this case, I, I want, uh, I don't want it so intense. So about 0.56. And let's see. Maybe this is too much, but let's keep it like that. <clears throat> so let's try to create a material, so preview material, and connect this to the albedo or base color, and this as displacement, so the I channel. Right away, I'm gonna change the displacement amount to 0.5 and change this to 500. Let's see how that looks. So maybe this is too much. Let me see how much I used. So point. 0.05 so something along these lines i can see that some of the stones are really steep so maybe we can remove some of this blending and maybe in here with this random mono where we mo we randomize the height in this case we can change this a bit so now I'm just improvising, but it should give a similar result, hopefully. So is there, I still want to add some noise to the stones and some blurring. In this case, I'm going to create a fractal noise. So after this fractal noise, and this will be around 0.08 and the rest is fine. Maybe reduce a bit the roughness and I'm gonna multiply it over our current displacement map. In this case, reduce it a bit 
And now we will take another fractal noise because I want to change the size and around 0.03 and change it to purling in this case. And the rest is fine. Then we want to remap this. I just want to create some overall displacement on the rocks. Let's see how that looks. So that won't give us much. It's a bit hard to see. But maybe if we introduce this noise, and in this case I'm gonna play with this output. So I don't want to displace it as much. And in this case, let me see. Let's see the final result. I want some more displacement in this case. So let's reduce this noise. And also maybe give it 1000 divisions. It's a bit hard to see, but we start to see. Let me play with the speckler. So as you can see, we have that noise on the surface. And now this noise, we will add it so let's blend this and we will take this as the foreground and this one as the background this is just the noise for the the dirt texture or the ground part uh, and we will take as the mask so which one we will take so the compare notes so the we should create an all in here but fine so this will just add some noise to the background and let's connect this to the height and yeah this is the sort of result we get maybe we can introduce a bit more displacement so that is fine i wonder why oops why the logo is not so displaced let me see this should be as white by multiplying in here maybe we shouldn't take the random mono from here but actually from here from this id is this okay yeah something like this and we can play with the seed so we have more displacement in here these lines mm, but I don't think this is correct so maybe let's go back again and get it from here yeah this will look better hopefully let's see and now we have some more displacement in the logo uh, what else we might want to blur blur a bit the, the displacement map So, maybe give it a slight blur. Not so much, maybe just 0.001. And let's create a null. And call it this. And let's work on the, um, on the roughness map next. So now let's create the um, roughness map. So for that, I'm gonna take, before the HSV adjust, I'm gonna create RGB to mono. This will be just a cheap way of doing it. You can load the specular map from this texture, but or the roughness map, but I'm gonna just create it like this. And now we will remap and change the input max to around 0.6. So I want still a, uh, some specs of uh, some specular highlights so i'm gonna keep it like this and now i'm gonna introduce some variation so let's keep this i'm gonna create a, <coughs> a fractal noise oops and in increase this to about 0.15 and maybe a bit of the roughness and now let's remap this and I did uh, some heavy remapping this, so input max to 
or something and this one around 0.7 so something like this and now let me see if i played with the offset in this case no but we can and then just multiply this over the top of our specular map in this case we don't want to multiply so we want to max so maximum so we have some maybe we can decrease the scale to have some flat areas let's say and we might want to reduce a bit the effect something like this introduce some blurring in this case i don't want it as much 0.03 will be fine and let's see if we create a null and call this rough and let's connect this to the roughness so this won't look like much right now uh, I want this rainy look on the on the ground so this will be ideal for now and then we can adjust it if needed so that's the roughness done and we have our full network i don't believe i'm forgetting anything so we have the albedo the roughness and the displacement i mean it's not uh it's not something great but hopefully you'll you'll you have learned something new from this and now to finish it off we will do the rendering in karma so now we will move into Solaris. Let's just change this to 4K and let it calculate. Let's make sure we have the resolution and we do. The diffuse, uh, the file that I use is 4K also, so it will work nice. And the rest will be procedural, so we will have no issues with that. So, out of the geometry context, we will not use any of these. So let's move to Solaris. I'm going to change a few things. I'm going to make sure the camera is rendering the viewport size and the background can be dark and not display the environment lights. Let's do a soft create. And we will use a grid and set, let's set some initial divisions like 50. Let's create a UV texture and an output. And this UV texture will be reversed, so we need to reverse in here and make sure we are in the first style. Now let's create just a name. This will be the grid for our ground. And we will name it round, yes. Now we will <clears throat> use the same one, but in this case create a mountain. And I changed in this case to worldly self. This doesn't need to be followed. But let's maybe uh, might want to subdivide this. And I'm gonna change the element size and play with the offset. Let me see. Some I just want to create some paddles, that's all. Maybe we can go into the wrapping and create some lattice warp and gradient warp. So something along those lines. And now let's create a name so we can target the in Solaris and name it water. And now let's merge this. And we need to move this up quite a bit, so transform. Let's enable the transform. And move it up like so, maybe. Maybe a bit more, so. Now it's the part where you can get creative. I'm just gonna do it quickly, so I don't waste much of your time. And I believe this is the setup for now. Now 
we can create some initial setup. We will need the render geometry settings to change the displacement quality. We will need a material library for our materials. We will need a dome light and also the karma setting, render settings. And let's, for now, I'm going to use the uh, an HDRI from Polyevan. So change this to light long. Uh, like a desk I HDRI. And let's create the material so we can start to see. Armor material builder. And I'm gonna change this to round. Oops. Round mat. And we will just load the texture, so image. And let's see if we have them copied. No. So OP. And we have OBJ, Geo, uh, Cop, Net, and Albedo. So that is fine. And it's an RGB. Let's connect it to the base color. Let's duplicate and select the roughness and change this to float. Connect this to the spec color roughness and sh Take this one as float also and connect with and do the this. <coughs> now we will connect this to the displacement. So displacement and we'll change this to 0.5. Since our scene now is 10 times bigger, we will need more displacement. If you want to keep the same size or the same values, you might want to use a grid of one by one. So uh, 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 let's create also the water material. And I'm gonna use a common material builder and name it water, water net. I'm gonna go to the transmission, set it to one. And I have some color, some light blue co color. You don't have to follow this. And I'm gonna change the depth to two. And I believe that's all. So, a very simple water material. This is not a, a rendering masterclass, so just keep uh, keep that in mind. So, let's auto fill the materials and assign to geometry. And I'm gonna select the ground, connect it in here, and the water, connect it in here. So, uh, Let's disable the light in here and create a camera. So we'll go in here and maybe something along those lines. So let's go in here and new camera. And let's fill in the view. Something like this. We might change that. Let's set this to light and go to the camera mask and set it to one. So, all right. Now we will create another light, but let's just render like this and see how it looks. So nothing much. We can see some pedals here and there, but we will change this and it will have a dramatic impact in our render. So in this case, we will select the render geometry settings and target the ground and we will uh, set the dicing to a higher value. In this case, I chose 1.5. It's a bit too much, but for this simple scene, it won't make a difference. Well, depending on your hardware, of course. And let's see if that helps us with the displacements and we start to see some more displacements. Maybe the displacement amount is too much now that I see it, but let's keep it like that for now. And now we will create a new light. So let me just check where did I use that light. So let's see, we have a camera in here and we want a light coming from here. So let's create a light. Let's disable this one for now. 
and this one will be uh, a rectangle light so rectangle and it's maybe able to select it so we can go ultra light light one and make sure we don't lock the view and in this case i want it something along these lines let's see our light in, in this case and we want to use a gobo so i'm gonna create in here a, a light filter li library so light filter library it's a mouthful and create a gobo and i'm gonna use a gobo from grayscale gorilla i believe i got some years ago and i don't believe i change anything in here now I just need to apply it to the light. So in this case, I'm gonna use in the light. I'm gonna go in here, light filter, and select the light filter global. I believe that's how we do it. And I'm also going to change the width. Let's see how that looks by default. So. If we take a quick render, of course we need to increase the intensity, so 10 and 14. And let's see if that couple is taking effect. Maybe we need to reduce the size, something like 0.2 and 0.2. And we start to see the effect of that gobo. But now I don't remember how I did this, but Let's see if it's in here. So in the transform tab, I'm gonna enable look at. And it's hard to see that gobo taking effect. So let's actually render this. Let's maybe put this down. Did I change the scale? <laughs> Let me see if I have similar values in here. I didn't change the scale. So maybe let's move this down. Oops. Let's move this down. So let's see our camera. And this is not. Oh, let's see again. I'm having. Oops. So my graphics card just tripped. I need to restart the thing. Let's see if we can get this light to look properly. So something along those lines. And to be honest, I'm going to change this to some values I have. So point uh, seven, six and this can be like this and i'm going to change the rotation and around this and the look at i'm going to play with it and that looks something like my my scene and it still looks way different but let's keep it like this so this will be our result and now we can introduce the the dumb light so let's do that and i'm going to change this the intensity of the dumb light to 0.35 let's see how that looks and that will dramatically it will change dramatically the look maybe let's reduce the intensity of the area light so 12 13 I'm not sure if I'm getting the gobo. So light filter, I'm the gobo. Let's actually. Why the hell this is one? Point two, point two. Oh, it looks better. 
Where was I changing the, the size? I'm confused. So something like that. Now we can see a bit better the global. Let's look at our camera. And now let's go to the camera, select the camera node, click enter, shift F, and let's place our focus with left click and holding shift. Let's go to the camera, and in this case I used an F stop of 0.1. And let's see how that looks. So something like that is a bit different from my final results. Maybe we can play a bit with the displacement amount, I think it's too much, so let's go in there and decrease this to 0.38. Do we need to restart the render? So as you can see that Gobo is having a nice effect, and again this is not a, a rendering masterclass and that neither I am a, speciali a specialist in that. But we try to do a bit of everything and sometimes things work, sometimes they don't work as well. But maybe let's play with a bit of this. Let's see, let's unpin this. And we can add a bit less element size. And also play with the specularity, so specular. 0.05 let's see how that looks and you know you can play around until you feel this is okay but i believe i'm gonna leave it right here maybe we can play with the uh, yeah let's let's actually go to the object object context and in here in the displacement where i'm adding these so maybe we can reduce the effect and let's restart the render due to the displacement and that's a bit less of a less aggressive and what else can we do in my final scene i had a, quite a bit more specular so let's maybe go to the stage take this light and move it a bit in. I'm not seeing the ground displacement. So maybe we need to go in here and reduce these offsets of point one. Point oh eight. So, uh, I think that's it guys, hopefully you learned something new, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this one, and uh, uh, if you want to check out my Patreon, where you can find this scene file, along with hundreds of other scene files, hours of exclusive tutorials, like this one, and um, also I have in there exclusive courses, that you can also check out and forgive me if this was not a perfect result but now that i'm i'm seeing in here a strange thing so i'm actually going to move this down a bit move this up i mean and let's see it's hard to see in here and let's also change this to XPO, change it to 512, and do a final render. So yeah guys, this is our final render, I just moved a bit uh, up the, the water uh, grid, and also played a bit with the specularity. I would like to have more specular highlights around here, but it doesn't look bad, right? It's not uh, as bad as I thought would be. So hopefully you enjoyed this one, again, thank you for watching, and please leave a comment if you want to leave a positive comment or negative but leave a comment I, I always like to hear your thoughts so thank you for watching and i'll see you next time